Hello friends! Recently one of you guys posted a very interesting comment to my video simulating mouse and keyboard events. Here it is, Kingor. Ah, what a lovely name. Makes me think of sunshine and rainbows. On a side note, Lucifer recently became a friend as well. Anyways, let's take a look. He writes, For DirectX games this won't work. Referring to my method of simulating keyboard input. And he continues to explain how to do it better. You need to use map virtual key function with key event if scan code flag. And you need to add some sleep time, like 5 milliseconds, between keep down and key up. Otherwise this won't work either. Input.ki.wvk is not used in this case. If this wasn't wonderful enough already, he even adds a code snippet for us to copy paste. Wonderful! So coming up, we will exactly do that, test it, compare it with my method and then write a small class for executing keyboard macros in games. But you know what I like a lot more than materialistic things? Knowledge. That's a hacking group we've been reporting on that's claimed responsibility for reasons attacked. First step, let's create a new project and add our usual basic UI, meaning infinite loop and checking for key states. If numpad 0 gets pressed, we exit. If numpad 1 gets pressed, we shall execute the code I already explained to you in the old video linked above. And if numpad 2 gets pressed, let's execute the code given by Kingor with just one minor altercation, since there is no need for us to use Chrono. Now let's run the code as well as a test target. First target is Halo. Why Halo? Because Halo does use DirectX 9. And Kingor claims his method works in that case, while mine does not. Pressing numpad 1. Sure enough, nothing happens. Pressing numpad 2 on the other hand, and Master Chief comes to life. Very interesting stuff. Let's try a different target, Elder Scrolls Online. ESO does use DirectX 11, so let's try again. Pressing numpad 1. Interesting, the character does move, but it keeps moving. It should just move if I press the key. So it kind of works, but not properly. Let's try numpad 2. Again, works like a charm. Alright, that's cool. We learned how to simulate keyboard input for DirectX games in a probably reliable way. Thanks, King. But why stop here? Let's have some fun with it. In many games, macros are very useful. Bunny hop macro for CSGO, for instance, or skill rotations in MMOs. So let's create a class capable of executing such macros. First method is pretty obvious. Parameter is the character of the key we want to press and inside we put the newly learned method of how to simulate the input. Now what we want this class to be capable of is to press some keys in some order and optionally have breaks in between. To achieve this let's create some member variables. First a vector storing the keys and second a vector storing the time between the key presses. We also want the option to loop the macro, so let's add a boolean indicating if we loop or not. And we also want to be able to set a key which stops the loop. Alright, next up the constructor. Straightforward, just pass all the variables and set them. And now the function, let's call it run. Inside we should check if the vectors of keys and pause are of equal size. If not, output an error and stop. If everything is fine, we want to execute the macro. Now since the macro should be executed at least once, let's make a do while, which means the code inside will be executed at least once, afterwards only if the condition at the bottom is met. The condition is of course the boolean we defined earlier. And inside we just have to loop through the vectors. First press a key, then take a break. Multiply by 1000 to get the time in seconds. If there shall be no break between key presses, we can just pass 0 in the vector. Inside the loop, we also have to check if the stop key gets pressed. Back in our main, let's check out what we created. First we need the key vector. Here I set some keys to cast spells in the game, where the head symbol is for switching between the hotbars. Next we need the pause vector, containing break time in seconds. Alright, now we have to create an object of our class. Let's say we do want to loop and we want numpad 9 to stop the loop. Then call the run function. That's it. Pretty neat I would say. Short and simple option to create a macro. 
but of course we gotta test it. So run it and, well it works. That's pretty neat. I won't use it myself because I'm paranoid about getting banned, but to be honest, something like this would be actually pretty useful to me. And that's already it friends. I hope you learned a thing or two, or at least enjoyed my cringy edits. Until next time friends, talk to you soon.